Hey everyone, this is Mike and Kelsey at Sweetbriar Farm. Um, if you're new to our channel, we are in central northern Michigan. Uh, we raise uh, cattle. We raise pigs. <coughs> we raise goats. <coughs> you <got one. coughs> We raise laying hens and chickens. We raise honeybees and seasonal produce. Yeah, we're taking part of the Five Things Livestock Collaboration with Sage and Stone Homestead. They're going to be, be talking about rabbits. Uh, GWP Homestead talking about goats. Suburban Sodbuster talking about bees. Old Swede Farm chickens. Yogi Hollow Farm pigs. Heavenly Homestead ducks. And us, Sweetbriar Farm, we're going to be talking about cattle. We were really pleased to be uh, chosen to do cattle. We've been raising our cattle for a few years now, and we really like to have some experience to fall back on before we share our thoughts on something. So um, not everybody does things the same way we do. You might agree with the way we do things. Something different might work better for you, and that's totally fine. We're just sharing what works for us. We're lucky we get to talk about cattle because we love cows, don't we, Kelsey? We love cows so much. <laughs> so we might have more than five things that we're going to talk about in this video, um, but we're going to basically um, give some tips for starting from scratch, basically getting started with cattle. And today is a perfect op opportunity because we actually have a new heifer calf that we just brought home and we'll go through the process of unloading her um, and showing her showing you what we do when we bring home a calf and uh, she is um, spirited she's a little, little got a little <laughs> wild in her right now they've been working with her on a halter for a little bit um, but uh, she nearly knocked me on my butt when when uh, <laughs> uh, we were loading her um, so we're gonna open her open up the trailer show you our setup here um, and get things going so I'll talk about this again later in the video confinement areas uh, sacrifice areas this is a our heifer pen and um, one of the things you want to take into consideration when you're making your pens is the gate setup this is not like a, a little goat that you can transport in a dog carrier um, so having this gate hinged the way it is we can open this up and then have the trailer doors open so we're not going to actually um, uh, let the cow loose in the backyard here. Um, we also have this heifer pen set up so we can push these cows into their shelter. Close this up. Keep going. No, no, no. Keep going and confine them in here while we unload the new heifer. This doubles as a kind of a squeeze. So I can actually trap a cow in here. And we can put a halter on her. This is just an example, we're not gonna do anything with her. But I have this gate where they can't get through. They might try, but she's squeezed here. We could put a halter on her if we wanted. But right now, we just want to keep this closed. Simple as that. And we're going to unload our new heifer calf. So Heather's going to be scanning the comments of these videos for all the channels um, and entering people into a giveaway for a Joel Salatin book. I believe it's called The Pigginess of the Pig. Um, any comments on this video of ours, you'll be entered into another one of our honey giveaways. So comment below, say hi, whatever you want to do. Don't give us the middle finger and then you won't be entered. All right, so we have this old horse trailer, it's got two doors. So I'm going to open this up. She's gonna come running right out at Kelsey, so. <laughs> yeah, watch, watch out, Kelsey. All right. Or beware. Maybe we 
have people comment with name ideas. All right, so we need to let her calm down so she doesn't run through her fence here. So we're gonna get out of here. But we're gonna let her calm down here for a few days um, before we start working with her. But she's a pretty little thing. She's a Red Dexter, uh, triple registered calf. Um, Really excellent genetics, good milking lines, good beef production lines. When you when you add a new cow to your farm, they have a social hierarchy, so these girls are gonna have to fight it out to see who's the, the big dog in this pen and and work on that too. So it's totally normal when you introduce a new animal that there'll be a little bit of aggressive behavior back and forth. Nobody should hurt each other, but don't be surprised when you see it. And we're all rooting for Millie. <laughs> so getting started with cattle, they, sh you know, with the young younger ones, we're in northern Michigan, it's gonna get cold here. We've had snow on the ground, freezing temperatures. Um, they don't necessarily need much of a shelter. You want a place for them to stay out of the wind more. Um, our other cows, they will bed down on the pine trees in the back and stay out of the wind and the rain. Um, but they don't need much of a shelter. They're very hardy, um, well insulated. I come out here in the morning after snow, they'll have snow on their back. Um, so they don't need much of a shelter. I think one of our f favorite things um, is working cattle, so. <laughs> And Kelsey loves working cattle too, as you can see here. With with uh, starting with ca cattle, um, it's a bigger endeavor than goats. Yeah. Um, our top top tip for getting started with cattle is have good fencing. Yeah. So this is kind of a rinky dink setup right here. It was kind of a late project that we we, we did. But our perimeter fencing are around the property, around the pastures, we have a really good field fence and then we have a hot wire midway and then at the top. So the cows never touch the fence. Uh, here in this heifer pen you can see that it's kind of boat out here i've got this t-post here they rub and scratch on this it's not a big deal the other thing if you're in an area like we are with um, somewhat of a busy road um, having multiple layers of fencing so if they busted out of here they're still confined in our backyard we've got a couple different layers of fencing so if a cow did get out or we came home and one of our pigs was out, um, they're still confined in, in the backyard, so. Yes, yeah, fence your farm like an onion. Yep. So yeah, the, the, the first tips would be um, having good fencing and confinement areas and just simple thinking about your gate setup, um, whether you're backing up into a barn um, or a little paddock like this. Mm -hmm. um, just the little things that go a long way um, because cows are not like goats, like I said. You need a trailer to transport them. Um, and uh, when they're young like that and sprightly, you gotta be prepared for them to run and jump out at you. So. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely not big goats. Yeah. <laughs> so th this is one of our tips for getting started with cattle. Um, is to have a confinement area for this, the, the cattle. Um, we're actually separating one of our steers. We think the butcher's coming tomorrow, um, but we're gonna put um, our butcher steer and a buddy in this area here. We have this set up so we can open this gate, push it out and bring the cattle in. And then what we'll do is 
right now, since we dual since we dual purpose most of our structures, we have our one sow in here with her piglets. We'll close this gate up, and this will swing to this post here, or it will swing all the way open. So when the butcher does come, um, we'll be able to you know swing this gate one way or the other for how we need it. Um, and bring the bobcat in in order to to uh, lift the, the carcass up. So that's just one one tip when you're thinking about getting started with cattle is your design. And actually, that's one of my favorite parts about uh, farming and cattle is thinking about moving the animals and how the animals want to move. You've seen if you've watched our channel, we've chased animals trying to get them into our confinement area. Um, so it can be difficult, but um, you know, starting out, you, do, you do make do with what you got. Perfect. So it's almost like I was a genius when I designed this. Look at how well that worked. I kind of think we kind of got lucky, but uh, we let him. Sure, I appreciate in Mike's designs, and I'm not sure if this was deliberate, but having gaps between fence posts that a person can squeeze out of, but not not a cow or a boar. I find that makes it way easier. So like when I have to sneak in here to grab Boris's dish I can just squeeze through. Um, Boris doesn't make me nervous but like our mama sow with babies sometimes it's nice to be able to have a quick escape. <laughs> so another tip for when you get started with with cattle is to take your time you know um, designing your your uh, structures and confinement areas and things like that your paddocks um, how you're going to rotate your animals use your land um, but when you do have the means to do it, we recommend buying some type of squeeze and head gate system so that you can work your animals, vaccinate them. We've had to pull porcupines out of cow's noses. Um, but until you can afford something like that, we've used a simple gate like you see there and basically run the animal and squeeze it in between the wall and the gate and as long as they can't back up then that works just fine i'm able to push on the animal or on the gate which squeezes the animal against the wall and then kelsey was able to give vaccination so definitely something that you know don't throw a lot of money into um you know this was like a i think 1500 dollar little set setup that we bought uh used a head gate just like that it probably nowadays costs about 1200 dollars just for that, so, so we got the extra little fencing pieces and stuff that went along with it. We didn't have this until this year, so it was three years before we bought it. Um, and it takes time to learn how you were going to work your animals um, through a system and confine them. Don't go spend a lot of money right at first. Get your animals and then you know learn as you go. Uh, and like I said, start with something as simple as a, as a gate like that. So when can you breed your cattle? We shoot for our heifers to calve for the first time right around their second birthday. So in Michigan, we like to have our calves hit the ground in early spring, like April, May seems to work really well for us. Um, so that means when the heifers are about 14 months old, that's when we introduce them to our bulls. And cattle have a gestation period just like humans of nine months. So that usually times it just right that their calves will come in early spring, like April, May. Another tip for when you are ready, and if you're breeding animals or breeding cattle, um, we recommend to spend the money, travel if you need to, and get a good proven bull that's been handled or worked at least, uh, preferably halter trained. Um, temperament next to confirmation should be your top priority if you're getting a bull to breed. Especially, again, this is geared towards small farms, small you know, homesteading. 
families looking into getting into cattle, start with a, a, a well-tempered bull. Even if he doesn't have the best confirmation, um, temperament should be your number one priority. And then, you know, as you gain experience, um, you know, upgrade your herd, upgrade your genetics as you go. Our first bull, we spent $900. He was a registered Dexter bull, but he was not worked. Um, and getting into the pen with him was sometimes nerve wracking, which is why he's in our freezer and making delicious meals for us right now. So for your herd, when you're getting started buying animals, with the exception of the bull, which we recommend buying an experienced and trained proven bull, the rest of our animals, we recommend buying young. So um, all of our Dexters, we like to try and get them as weaned heifers. So they're usually about six months old. They've been raised by their dams, um, but they're still young enough when we get them that we can work with them and train them and they're, they're not afraid of people. Um, we've had better luck with the, the weanlings that we bring home than we have with like yearlings or older cows that we've bought. The exception to buying dam raised calves, I think, is if you want a dairy animal. So, like our Millie, we bought as a bottle baby, I think she was two weeks old when we brought her home. And we bottle raised her, bucket fed her, and she's um, much friendlier. She's comfortable with our touch. She wants to be petted and touched, which is different. You want different things from a dairy animal than you do from a beef. So I wouldn't start with a bottle baby or a bucket calf because they do require more care and can go downhill fast. So for your first calves, start with something that's been raised on mom. So get like a six month old calf that's been raised on mom, but then weaned. Yeah. You want to be able to look, know the signs to look for when an animal starts getting sick because when they get sick, they get sick fast and they can yeah. die fast. Yes. Yeah, that's true. So uh, we also recommend buying from registered and clean tested herds if you can find them. Um, so uh, sale barns are a risky place even though they're an easy place to go find animals cheaply. Uh, there's a lot of animals from different places mixing. They're all stressed and that's a real place where diseases really do spread. And the last thing you want to do is bring home an animal that's going to shed disease that will contaminate your farm for years. So we try to buy from herds that are yonis tested negative is a big one. Um, you want to be on the lookout for any other diseases. Um, and basically, you know, try and buy the healthiest animals you can. It would be better to start with fewer animals that come from directly from small farms where you know that they're managing and monitoring disease and biosecurity rather than to come home with half a dozen sale barn animals and then end up with sick sick cattle. So again, this, this video is not meant for somebody who's who's been farming cattle for 40 years or anything like that. Uh, this is for people that are getting started, um, thinking about raising cattle. Again, we're at the end of our third year with raising cattle. We started out with a couple of beef steers, um, got it from some guy. We had a, a Hereford and a Jersey Cross and just weren't right for our, for our land. So really do the research and, and think about um, which breed would work best for how much land you have. We raise Dexters and a few Jerseys. Dexters are the world's smallest standard breed. So when they're born, they're, the calves are 25 to 35 pounds, um, very small. They're, we say they're, they're e easy to manage, even though you watch us, if you watch our videos, we chase <laughs> these little suckers around. Uh, but one thing that we, you know, we, when we both research the crap out of things before, we, you know, we, we do things usually, sometimes we j jump in without knowing, but you know, things like, you know, what we're recommending as far as buying a bull and stuff like that. We knew, everybody warned us, but we didn't listen. Uh, we didn't spend the money. We bought this bull that wasn't right for our farm, our first Dexter bull. Um, and again, we're, we're, we're eating him because of the mistake we made. He was cheap, he was registered, and uh, he's now tasty. But uh, one of the other things, one of the things we learned is that these little calves are stronger than you think. Trying to halter break these things, but we 
tie them to the tractor and 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 pull them around the backyard, um, which seems to work the so best. Using the tractor and pulling them around lessens the amount of energy that you need um, when you're halter breaking. So maybe for somebody who's just getting started, if you really want an animal that's trained, you should pay for one that's been trained. You know, like splurge and spend the money if you really want a halter trained cow that you plan to milk. Just buy one. Yeah. First one. Or get jerseys. <laughs> or get jerseys. Yeah. See. But uh, well, actually, both of our jerseys were. They were bottle, bottle babies, babies so. who were handled a lot yeah. as little calves. Yeah. And I think that makes all the difference in the world is a bottle baby calf versus. Yeah. You know, dam raise is the temperament, initial temperament. Um, our Jolene, our, our one Dexter, she's we got her when she was a heifer, five months old. And she's by far has the best temperament of the Dexter heifers yes. and cows um, that we have. Yeah. That we have. And and there are plenty of people who have Dexters who they milk and they handle and who like to be touched by their people. It's all about how they're raised. And honestly, we're just figuring it out. So these are the first Dexter calves that we're really trying to halter train ourselves. And we're on year three. So when you're getting started with a calf and you plan to milk her, or even if you just want to be able to handle them all over, it's important just like when you get a puppy that they're used to feeling your hands all over their body. So I always make sure I pet her all over. I touch her udder and her teat so when the time comes that's not new and scary. And then just like with a puppy when you're going to trim their feet, I always oh, practice picking up her feet. So she's used to having that and balancing on three legs. Good girl. So I think, I don't know, I'm really glad that we started with Greta as one of our first cows, our jersey, because um, Shoes, <laughs> the jerseys are just, in our experience, which is limited, they're, they're much more friendly. They like their people more. They're just easier to work with. Yeah, the, the number one cow we recommend for starting for your homestead, which could be dual purpose to milk and, and meat, mm -hmm. um, is definitely the jersey. Yeah. yeah. The Dexters that we have, we have as the dual purpose breed, they're meat to the bone ratio is higher on the meat side. The dairy breeds are going to be more bony, but the beef is delicious from what I've had of dairy um, beef. We have not yet milked a Dexter. We will next year. Jolene will be our Dexter milk cow. It sounds like a challenge. That's a promise <laughs> to you, everybody. She will be our milk cow. Um, but the extra milk is supposed to rival that of the Jersey, which we've had in this super rich and creamy and so good, which is why we bought Millie to have another one. Yeah. One, one benefit that the Dexters have over Jersey's also is the temperament of the bulls. So like our Mr. President is wonderful. Um, but dairy bulls like Holstein and Jersey bulls have a reputation for being the most dangerous bulls of all breeds. I know, hard to believe. Yeah, in our la one of the last videos somebody commented they had, uh, he remembers as a kid, that they had a Holstein bull that had a ring in his nose and um, that bull actually ripped the ring out of its nose. So the rings are only off switches if they mind it. It was his point and very good comment. Mm -hmm. Ours, we like I said, we I don't have to ever use the ring in our bull, but um, yeah, the Holsteins are known for being more aggressive for sure. So for our our cows, we keep feeding really simple. Um, we only use grain for um, when we're milking or like if we need a distraction. Um, and actually we're kind of moving away from using it as a distraction too. Um, so, uh, when we do use grain, we just get sweet feed from our local co-op. Um, but, but only very minimal amounts. Mostly what we feed is just really good quality hay. Um, so we try and get hay that's a mix of different kinds of grasses and also legumes. So around us, we live in dairy country. So there's a lot of really nice alfalfa, clover, grass hay around us um, that we buy in uh, and then when it gets cold out so when your temperatures are going to be below 40 all day long 
then you can feed um, fermented hay. They call it haylage. So they'll, the hay farmers cut the hay, but instead of waiting for it to dry, they'll wrap it, like roll it up into round bales, and then wrap it in plastic while it's wet. And then that allows the hay to ferment. And the cows love that stuff. That's what we're, we're feeding right now. We switch, just switched to the baleage. Uh, the girls here are getting calf starter pellets too. Because we had Millie as a, a bucket baby, um, we got the room and starter calf pellets. And since we wean these girls, they get a scoop. Well, like a half a scoop each morning. So um, very minimal amount of grain that the girls here get. Yeah, we could probably even stop that soon. Yeah, well they, it's, it's not hurting them. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they look great. Uh, we also give uh, a mineral block. This one they keep kept burying in the hay. I have a mess here to clean up. Um, but our soils are deficient in selenium. So selenium is important for uh, reproduction, uh, health, and actually allowing the cat, cow to bring a uh, calf to term without aborting. Uh, so we give uh, mineral block, salt block with selenium. We use the block forms because I haven't spent the money to buy a nice mineral feeder where I can have out in the paddock where it's covered and they're not going to waste it because those things are like $200 and the minerals aren't cheap either. These are like $12 blocks but yeah you buy a bag of the mineral it's like $30, $40 and um, we were using just these little feeding buckets for it but then they I've, I've screwed them to the fence um, gates, they break them off, um, they just end up, you know, wasting a lot of the minerals, so the block form is what we're using right now, and, and they lick it, and do just fine with it, it seems. This is the baleage that we're feeding right now, it's wrapped, so only the ends are exposed, but it's cold enough where we're not really worried about spoilage. These are much heavier than the last bales that we were getting, so these are about five foot rounds. Um, it's, it smells so good. I don't know. I just love the smell of that fermented, uh, baleage. Um, the cows absolutely love it. It's, you can see the leafy there. So there's a good amount of legume in it. Um, and then there's, you know, this stocky stemmy stuff, which the cows need is part of their, uh, room and health as well. So, but they love it. Um, we're right now getting really good prices, $50 a bale and they last two of these last this group a little over a week so i ever i figure a hundred dollars a week to feed these cows that's fifty two hundred dollars a year divided by how many ever head we have i think i figure it's about four to five hundred dollars in hay per cow per year that's we're in central northern michigan and um surrounded by dairy farms lots of hay fields so our prices are good so i got two two water troughs here as well two hay racks i like to keep my hay as out of the out of the uh, elements as best i can so i got these simple little structures that i built four to five cows will feed out of this one and they'll all line up over here no problem if it rains in the summertime i'll throw the tarp over uh the hay but right now we're in winter seat in winter mode so the snow is not going to really hurt it too much An another tip when you're starting out like i said start don't spend a lot of money i bought it was a half a round feeder and i flattened it with my tractor so i turned it into a uh line line feeder here um i think i paid 50 bucks for that so facebook marketplace craigslist start cheap and then expand grow as you as you your system grows. So continuing talking about nutrition, in addition to hay in the winter time or when we notice our cattle need a little extra something, we offer a protein tub um, and we recommend for our cattle at least no more than 16% protein. Um, too much protein at once and they'll get scours, which is a fancy word for diarrhea. All right, thank you guys for watching Sweetbriar Farm. I hope you learned something and uh, you're still excited about cattle and don't be discouraged, it's a lot to take on, but you'll pick it up and learn as you go, just do it.
Um, and if you're interested in watching the other Five Things Livestock Collaborators videos, make sure you check out the playlist in the description of this video. Thanks guys.